Hi, this is Dustin with Pro EV School. I had somebody that asked me, this is what they asked, I want to connect a Pro 2 to an STRF GWX so I can upload and test my programs. I have two 1700 touch panels and one um, 2000L. And she wanted to know kind of how to hook them up and how to configure them. So so I just I did some digging. These, these are old products, and the reason that... Uh, that she's using them, and she just wants to test some some code and kind of learn more about programming. So I thought that's great. I can I can kind of look mm-hmm. through this, and let me sort of explain my process here. Uh, go to Crestron. Now, even their old products that they have, they they still list them on their website, um, and they have some specs. So I'm just going to try to show them here. Uh, first one was. I'll, I'll look at the touch panel because this is where I really noticed the the challenge I guess you could say so 1700 yeah let's go backspace and I'm just gonna search for 1700 it's an old model so it doesn't get indexed kind of properly so anyway it comes up TPS 17 that's what it is Um, actually no that's incorrect my apologies it is ST 1700 which is the wireless version so under technical specif er Actually, I just basically read through here, and I looked at long-range 433 megahertz communication via CNRF GWA, and that's not the one that we were looking at. We were looking at the RF GWX. So I just want to double-check here that the GWX, I already know what the answer is. Basically, I can't remember what the the megahertz was, but it's a, a 418 megahertz, I think, and this one takes needs a 433, so right out of the gate, it's not going to work. You need to use use the right gear. Now, you'll find this if you're dealing with old stuff. You, you need to make sure that you have stuff that's actually going to be able to talk to each other. So, how do we set this up? Um, Wiring-wise, let me just show you here. Assuming you have, this, have the proper gateway now, um, let's just bring it up here, if I can. Wiring-wise, it's very simple. See the, I'll do a zoomable photo here. See the net 24YZ and ground. You just connect that directly to, to Crestnet on the Pro 2. I think she said Pro 2. Yeah, on the Pro 2 processor. That'll power it, and it will also give it communication. Um, the default ID code, I'm not sure what it is, but you'll just want to look at what, what that is in hex. So if, uh, there's usually a default that these come on, when you bring them into the program, and I'll show you kind of how that works. I'll just keep this open, drag it away. So first of all, this is just a new simple program, and I'm not really going to do any programming. I'm just going to show how to set it up. So you open up Simple Windows, go File New. I've already done that. Double click to pick a processor. You can also drag it from this side. I like to do it this way because it's easier, quicker. Uh, Pro Two. So you see this? You expand here. Now Crestron gives you like a ton of different ways to do stuff. So I'm just going to work with the way that I'm familiar. I mean, like you can find stuff in the list and drag it in. Actually, in this case, it might be better to do it that way. So I'm going to try to find it here. Um, wireless receivers, RF, CNRF, GW, what was the model number? CNRF, GWA, FGWA. So actually, if you double-click, or no, you right-click it. You can right-click it here, add system to device, or you can drag it into CNET, or you can go into CNET, right-click it on, on an ID. Just wait for it to look at its database. And you can ac- actually, sorry, double-click, and you can pick from a, a drop-down list of a whole bunch of different things. I'm doing it this way because I wanted to add it at its default address for this type of, of um, Crestnet device. So you can add a bunch of them if you have. I'm just going to add one. And it threw it in here and gave it ID 24. So that means that's that's its factory setting. If you look back here on the zoom in, that ID code would be 2, 4. High, high would be 2 and low would be 4. And that's how it comes out on this side, ID 24. And the next thing you need is your panel. Well, in the RF gateway, it actually has these RF IDs embedded inside the uh, RF gateway unit itself. So I think I'm going to try to do the same thing here. 
and add it this way under touch panels I think it's wireless one way and this only works because I have I have the other window open and I know that it says smart touch one way wireless panel so if you just have the part number it might be easier to to find it from a list and that you do that double clicking like this um, so I'm gonna go here right click add to system and let's, let's see what it did here I put it at ID 10 so again that might be a, a default IP or RFID but basically where that is defined is I can't show you because I don't have a panel but in the setup menu of the panel you pick what its RFID is and then it will pick that channel on the gateway that it's connected to on these old ones you don't have to acquire anything to a gateway I think it, just within range it, it transmits on that 400 and what did I say it was 433 megahertz um, and it just talks between each other and then the RFID is what specifies basically what it is so now that the panels in there that's basically all the guts of getting it getting it to talk and again you set this RFID in the touch panel itself not in the touch panel file it's not in vision tools it's in in the setup of the panel itself so then you would go in into your your symbol side and you can take a look under Crestnet devices and add your programming here now it's a one-way haven't used a one-way panel in a long time so you can't send feedback to this thing you can only receive button presses just so you're aware of that and it looks like you also can't uh, you can't do a lot of stuff with this panel like you can't do analogs and serials so it's, it's pretty limited in what you can do but it's good for testing the other thing that's handy for testing is X panels and I've, I've got a video that I've already done showing you how to do a basic X panel just search for it here on YouTube or if you have any questions just um, message me at, at the blog or on Twitter or something at Pro AV School um, anybody that's watching this follow at Pro AV School on Periscope that's a, an iPhone or Android app and you can catch live broadcasts of when I'm talking about uh, different technical things including a lot more Crestron stuff these days so that's all I have for right now any more questions just uh, be sure to go to proavschool.com and leave a comment uh, you'll find my email address there and you can ask any sorts of questions we'll try to get you helped out we also have a Facebook page uh, I think it's it's basically for, um, Pro AV School on Facebook so be sure to check that out as well thanks for watching and we'll see you around